And hello, everybody. Landon Wright here from HowChurch.net, media director of HowChurch.net. It's time for another episode of How Table Talk. Now, look, normally I say it's a fantastic Tuesday, and I almost did, but this is a special Wednesday edition. Sometimes our plates just get a little bit too full, and we don't even have time for a 30-minute episode, but not today. Right over here to my right, we have the one and only Pastor KD. Pastor, good to have you back. Good to be back. Yes, sir. I can always count on you showing up, man. And it's just going to be one guy talking to himself. I don't know how many views that would get. And then over here to the left, we have the newest addition to the house staff, Mr. Derek Ashcraft. How are you, sir? I'm so good. So good? So good. Everybody, look at that hat, man. Look at that. You can tell he's a musician. Derek actually has just joined us not too long ago. He's been here before. and he's, uh, One of his many duties is he's helping out with the music, the praise team, and all that. One heck of a keyboard player. So, um, anyways, guys, come on by and see that. That, that right there is incentive to catch a service. So, anyways, today's topic, folks, if you haven't already seen by the description, we're going to be talking about worship. Worship service, worship, worship, worship. Now, here's the thing. I know what you're probably thinking. Ain't that just church? Well, no. You have your sermon. You have your message. And that's, the, that's more considered study. Worship, what we know it as is, well, that's just the part of church with music in it. But what is it really? So go ahead and buckle up. Get ready. And uh, get ready to soak it in like a sponge because we got some words for you here. And by we, I mean mainly these two. I'm just, I'm just kind of here. So anyways, Derek. Why don't you go ahead and open it up, man? What is worship? Well, it is not the 15 minutes of music, really. It's more, it's more, I have, it's the activity of glorifying God in his presence with our voices and our hearts. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank thank you. you. Let me piggyback off of that. Also, that word worship means worth ship. So it's just a big definition. You hit it so well and said it so well, but it's we're worshiping him because he's worth it. He's worthy, and he's the only one that's worthy to be worshipped. Yes. Does not mean he is the only one capable of being worshipped, but the only one worthy to be worshipped. We worship things all the time, folks. Um whether we want to admit it or not, we do. So, I, you know, when we were thinking of this episode and thinking of, of what we were going to talk about, uh, we had a lot of awesome things on the table, and we will have Brother Derek back here very soon for future episodes because, you know, we just can't go through it all in one sitting. But when we were talking about talking about worship, uh, you know, I was trying to tether everything to music. I was like, why do we use music for it? Why is music involved? Because like these two fine gentlemen just said, it's just glorifying God intentionally, okay? So, yeah, you're supposed to glorify God in everything you do, but when you are intentionally saying, okay, for this 15, 30-minute period of my day, that's all I'm going to do, that's true worship when you're making that big effort there. So, that being said, music isn't really necessary but it kind of is, though, because it makes it so much better. So we're about to dip our toe into those waters. But, uh, gentlemen, anything else to add on just the concept of worship? Yes. Um, As a matter I of think fact. worship should carry on through our lives, too. It's like uh, it's the direct expression <laughs> of our ultimate purpose for living. Right? Hallelujah, yes. Uh, yes. yes. Beautiful, beautifully said. I, I think... The fact that we incorporate music is kind of man's addition to worship. It helps bridge the gap and uh, act as a catalyst for worship. And and when we talk about worship, we know that, again, that Lucifer led worship. He was the worship leader in heaven, and Lucifer wanted to be worshipped. Now watch this. It went from worshipping God to you angels worshiping me and then at that moment there was five I wills we won't go over but Lucifer created Satan and so now what's happening to worship if we aren't careful it becomes perverted because Satan is the great pervert he perverts things and he wants to turn the attention of the one who's worthy to be worshipped which is God he wants to turn that now to him. 
or let me say it like this. As long as you don't worship God, he doesn't care if you worship him or not, as long as you don't worship God. Because that hurts the heart of God and that we were created to worship. That's the ultimate privilege that we have is to worship God. And that's what we were made for is to worship. That's what they're going to be doing in, in, in heaven, Revelation. You know, that it, it just... We are. It makes perfect, perfect sense when you put it that way. You know, of, of, of course he used to lead worship because, listen to this here. So, you know, like you said, we use music as a catalyst to kind of get us there. But Satan's number one weapon is distraction. So, you know, it's so easy to get too caught up in the music to where that becomes all you care about. You know, and even, you know, uh, I've... I've been guilty of it myself sometime. Um, even my own mom has said things, you know, now, now she loves church and all that, and, and, and but sometimes, you know, we'll be walking out, and it'll be a great sermon, and she'll be like, oh, yeah, it was a good sermon, but, you know, so-and-so was flat and this and that, and it just wasn't. And, you know, we all do that. We all have those those things. We're like, well, you know, it was just hard to get through that worship service. That, that distraction right there has now taken your mind off of what the whole point of going to the building was about, and now you're critiquing the music, you know. So, so it, it, it can be a double-edged sword, and, and I think the way to steer clear of that is to just always remind yourself, it doesn't even matter. I mean, we're here to glorify God. We're here to, to get in that mindset. I'm not here to be a critic. Yeah, and I think what you said, you know, we have a, a fantastic worship team. I'm so thankful for our worship leader and Derek and all of y'all who put your heart and time in there. And, and what you're saying is that you can come in here and Satan has just uh, got us to a point to where we can look around, we can look down instead of looking up. And what I mean by up, I'm talking about looking at the master and you know, when, you've, when you're in here with the mindset that I'm about to worship God, and, and it says bring the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice. Sometimes you just got to let everything go so you can worship God. But I, I think, um, Landon, that uh, Derek has some good insights uh, as well, and he, he has a, a chapter that he wants to talk about oh, yeah. in John that's, that's good. But, Derek, if you've got any more notes, we, let's, let's go through them. Let's, let's exhaust okay. what we have. I'm just saying I think he has some. Uh, well, I wrote down that another thing worship is, in my mind, is it's the outward display of our inward belief. Yeah. We put that out, and it's, it's I don't know how to say it, really. The I think you said it very well. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I want to add that that, that serves two purposes. The, the big purpose, the outward expression, the big purpose is, well, just, just showing God, hey, man, I mean, this is all for you. Thank you for, for everything and all that. And then the other thing is, is the secondary purpose is it shows people around us what we believe, and we're not putting on a front, but it's one of those, you know, if you're proud of your vehicle, you're going to park where everybody can see it. Yeah. You know, if you got yeah. an old beat-up rust bucket, you're going to go hide it somewhere. You don't want to be ashamed of this. You want to park right in the front row, let everybody see, I love God. It's not, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at my new outfit. I'm throwing my hands in the air. It's like, I love God, and you probably think I look a little crazy, but I really don't care because this is for him. Yeah, and it's not its not we're trying to be a distraction, and somehow Satan has duped us into believing that um, worship's a certain way. So if you do raise your hands or if you, if you are passionately giving all you are to all you know of him, that people is going to laugh at you or mock at you or think you're putting on a show. So it, it goes back to him being the perverter because he can't stand it. Y'all know he even hates us talking about this subject because he's he was an ex-employee and he's mad and he got fired, he got kicked out of heaven and he just hates us worshiping God. And mm -hmm. so even at this moment, um, he can't stand it, but when we're worshiping God, it, you know, as long as it is in truth and spirit, you know, it, it's a wonderful thing. And I got something I want to read right here that worship's not a playground thing. It can turn into a battleground thing, meaning 
not us fight each other, but we go to war against Satan because Judah was the praised tribe that led the ark, the presence of God. But, but more importantly, it's holy ground. When you start worshiping, man, it's holy ground. And, and the enemy, I wrote down, was bold to use the one thing that should bring us all together, and that's the worship of God he's used to pull us apart. Think about it. Why? Because you worship differently than I, and here's how you are to worship. And it goes into the how and, and the worship wars and how we worship instead of who we worship. Mm-hmm. And, and, he, and he perverts it. That's what he does. But I don't want to hog it. I, I like how we uh-huh. keep going around and throw. But we're talking about worship and how he perverts it and, and what worship is. Absolutely. You know, the big question, what is it? We know what it is, but do we? Derek, up next, yes. please. Give us some more of those hot, tasty <laughs> snacks you got in that. Well, I was going to say that Lucifer has done a, a wonderful job at separating people. With especially, worship. Yeah, with worship. Like, we... We think it, it matters if it's a full band. We think it matters if it's hymns or contemporary or, you know, uh, if it's just a choir, a cappella. And it really, it doesn't because we, we can really, we can worship without music. It just helps. And, and, and I have to piggyback off your, yeah, your, your yeah, statement. Yeah. And here's, here's, the, here's the thing. You said that Satan separates us. Yes. Over worship. Now think Over about worship. that. So where did it start? Yeah. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Yeah. God knew how he wanted to be worshipped, and Adam taught his kids what God required. Why? Because Adam sinned. God covered them. And mm-hmm. so he knew how to worship God. He taught his kids, but Cain just thought, well, I can worship God the way I want to, and he brought his own sacrifice under his own understanding, and that's just what Satan wants. But just like God, he said, now Cain, basically, you know, sin's lying at your door, but you can change, you you know, you can. But instead, the first worship service led to murder, not just separation, it led to murder. Full how, thing. how many times have churches have been killed, in a sense, metaphorically speaking, or spiritually speaking, let me say that, because of the worship wars. I, I don't like worshiping like that. You don't like. So yeah. this is good. This is some good ping-ponging going on here. You know, I was just going to say that uh, what you were saying earlier, Derek, it, it doesn't matter the size of the band. It doesn't matter if you're going off tape music, a cappella music, whatever. But you should always give that 100% effort because just yeah. like with Cain and Abel, why well, was Abel given the green light? Because he gave the effort, okay, all the effort. And it was the blood. It was the blood yeah. that God required. Absolutely. Because I'm sure Cain worked hard to produce that fruit, but God required blood. And, and how do we know that? Because he shed a blood, or he shed a, a, he killed an animal, a lamb, and covered uh, Adam, when he sinned, Adam tried to cover himself with a fig leaf, and we've been doing that ever since, covering ourselves. But when we cover ourselves, God uncovers. But if He covers us, nobody uncovers. So He killed this lamb, and He made uh, the cover for. But it was the blood. It was the blood that God required, and so that's why when Abel brought the blood, it was accepted. But when Cain brought the fruit of his own hands. God said, no, this ain't about you and how yeah. good you can do something. I appreciate the effort, but it is about the blood. So the, the metaphor I like to use to tie those together was, you know, the blood, that's probably the thing that you got to get your hands dirty. That's the thing that, you know, God wants, uh, but he expects of us, but we're like, oh, but, but you know, it's, we're trying to get the church erected, and there's just so much going on, you know. So, so what I'm getting at is, is if all you can do easily is play taped worship music at your church. Now, you know that there's people there that can sing. You know that there's somebody there that could probably organize a practice. But it's just easier to do tape. It doesn't matter, right? And that's when it starts mattering. If you can do more, but you're just not doing it, well, then, then it's becoming about what you want. Well, and let, let me just say something. I think that is excellent because you know what? If we, we right now, I mean, we're not getting into the donkeys and the elephants. I'm for the lamb right here. We're not getting into the left yeah. wing or right wing. We're for the whole bird. But if we had to go right now and meet Donald Trump, 
how would we would we just dress any way we want to dress, act any way we want to act, talk any way? Would we prepare? Would we? You know what we'd do? We'd do everything that we possibly could do to present ourselves with excellence, whatever that whatever yeah. that way would be. And yeah. it, it's not that he demands that, but if we are going to go prepare ourselves to meet some, yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate the president, respect him. He's he's our president. But if we're going to meet him and do all of this and brag and get up early and be excited and have everything, yeah. how much more do we need to be prepared and give the excellence that you're talking about that I'm going to be preaching on Sunday, by the way, Sunday, 930, 1030. Uh, that's why we need to give it God the best. I agree. I, f I feel that, that makes me think of like concerts when I was. When I was little, my parents let me, they recorded a Michael Jackson concert for me. And they would pan out ac across the crowd, and you could see people crying and fainting even. Wow. They're worshiping a man. Right. But, you know, he does he provide for you? Does he love you unconditionally? No. 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 It's, it's you know, up. that's just yeah. one of the great... Uh, tactics one of the great strategies of satan to get us distracted is you know i was going to say that i you know the the reason we use music and worship as a catalyst it's no coincidence god i think created the tones and all the sounds and the air that come together to create music notes he did all that intentionally because music it just i mean there's no if ands or buts about it it, it, it provokes emotion um you know you hear a calming sign you hear the waves you start getting drowsy it provokes emotion so i feel like music is pretty essential to worship doesn't have to be christian music doesn't have to be a christian singing it you hear that song you're gonna feel that emotion and that's why you hear people all the time say you know like, like when their favorite singer dies or like thank you for all the yeah. memories thank you for yeah. doing this for me well yeah they did but you see that's just Satan can take that power of emotion, that power of music, and then, and, you know, I know uh, younger people that have had this this problem before, and I've, you know, just, I would always tell them, be like, yeah, you know, they're like, well, worship, I think it's all just a bunch of baloney, because the same thing can happen at a Snoop Dogg concert, if you like him enough, but I was like, it can, but it's just a part. You're taking a part off of the vehicle that is worship. And putting it over here, I mean, the part's still going to do what the part does. Right. And, and uh, you know, I, I love what you just said. And also, I know Derek's got some more nuggets, but I, I want to just say it like this. Are you feeling good or are you finding God in your worship? Mm. Yeah. Are you feeling good? It's okay to feel good now. We're made up of mind, intellect, and emotions. And we're mm -hmm. to worship God with our emotions. Our mind's made for truth. Our will's made for submission. And our emotions are made for worship. That's yeah. what really. So, but are you just feeling good, or are you finding God when you yeah. get out? When you when you get to, and you know what, Derek, I'm saying this, and we didn't practice this. This, mm -hmm. th I don't have any kind of monitors. We don't have any kind of uh, not monitors. What do you call them? Prompter. 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 Yeah, yeah, I knew <laughs> what they were. Uh, uh, we don't have any of those things. Uh, but I respect you because. It is so hard, I think, for someone who's a musician who, who loves music like you do and can tear that, make that keyboard just do whatever you want it to do, to say, I'm just, I'm just here to be a catalyst. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, it's not about me. It's not about what I'm playing as much as it is whom I'm playing to. Yes, that, that, that's why I, f I feel like. That's what's been good about having music and worship, because we help. It's it's not about us. It's right. it, we help everyone that comes in to get their mind off of their distractions, all their self. What yep. you know, we all think about ourselves a lot. Yeah. And all the lyrics are about God, so yep. we're thinking about God. We're feeling the music. That's right. And that's what that's what we're supposed to be doing. So so with our mind, we're thinking truth. Yeah. And with our and we hear the words feelings, repeating with yeah. our feelings right yes it, our, with our emotions and now what does our will do it submits it's a, yeah exactly it's just a beautiful it's a really beautiful thing it's not it's not like a, a systematic way of approaching God in the sense of the science of it or the methodology it's just the truth so I'm I'm seeing and saying truth I'm feeling the 
the tones that you so well so well spoke about. And we're going to get into that so much more that you have really delved into you and Derek. But then when I when I feel and then when I sit there and say the truth and I'm and I'm doing it to him and I know the truth, he's the truth. My will just submits and boy, then I surrender when I surrender. That is when God's presence is manifested in my life. Yes. And th then you give your whole self to him. Yeah, without fear of judgment Woo. or anything like that. Yeah. I like this. You it's know, great. folks, that's just that just goes to show you. This is gonna sound pretty, uh, pretty stereotypical, but but that's what I mean. That really is why you need when you read your Bible, you don't just grit your teeth and be like, all right. There's my chapter for the day or for the week, but but when you really just 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 think about it, you know, don't be worried about. Well, I hope I'm not doubting. I hope you don't think. No, no, no. No, God wants you to open your mind up and look at it because he really wants you to get it through your head because when you do, you know, it's, it's you know, just like what we're about to talk about when Jesus himself spoke about worship. At first, it's just words, and you're like, oh, okay, I got it. But like what you just said, it's the three-step process. Your yeah. will submits after this is done and this is done and all this. You know, the Bible says it plain as day. It's probably not in 21st century terms, yeah. but if you just look at it, He's not hiding nothing, though. The instructions are right yeah, there. No fine print. And, and, you know, here's the thing. I'm guilty, first of all. So I'm guilty of this. I can sit and watch a ball game and howl like a wolf, scream like a panther, and come to God's house, and I worry about what people think about me and say about me. And I'm not talking about being odd, and I'm not talking about just being emotional with with no concentration on God. You know, I'm not talking about making a scene, but I'm talking about we we just all have this great fear of man that is more than than man's faith in God when we come. It's like I really do, guys. I I'm shocked when people don't walk down the aisle and get saved. You know, we have very few Sundays that people don't get saved. We really do. But I'm so disappointed because when we went to the we go to the prayer room and pray before our services. I'm really expecting people to get and don't understand if anybody's lost. But that's the that's the belief and the faith and the expectation of what God can do when we worship Him yeah. and when we sell out to Him. And and real quick, it's just something I just thought of is you know you get discouraged when you don't see people get saved and. You know, I think that that's one thing that uh, it is a hidden snare is you start getting discouraged about your your career path in general. You're just like, well, should I even be doing this? Don't look like I'm very good at it. But you know, the thing is, is that's what it's like being a tool of God is because you feel bad about it. You know, because there's, the, I mean. I'm sure there might be a few preachers out there in America somewhere that's just like, well, I did my part, but when you, but when it bothers you like that, it's because you really are, you know, melding with God. It's it's you know, how you think he feels? Yeah, you I, know? yeah. I'm I'm just believing, you know, and it's I, it probably through my 31 years of doing this, it it probably was at different points a, a attack on your pride because you're thinking. That was a good message, but see, we ain't talking about we we done diverted from worship. We're worshiping in my stupid little mind when I'm thinking it's about me, and then I always had to learn. Wait, it ain't about me. I'm supposed to just believe and expect and point them to Jesus for them to find God. Yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to do. Yeah, it's constant work. Oh, you no know, you doubt. find yourself thinking about yourself. You have to change it. It's it's constant battle. But that's that's things. what I'm saying. There's been times, Derek, that no doubt the pride in me, and I'm sure every pastor in America is not you intentionally going, uh, they're going to come because I'm preaching this message. But when we get mm -hmm. disappointed to the to the point to where we feel like they rejected us, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Instead of him, that lets us know, okay, we did our part. And um, but do you have any more nuggets? You you threw some nuggets out there. I just want to know if you had any more. I'm not uh, sure. I, I wanted to talk about John 4, okay. 20 through 24. Is that all right, Landon? Hey, I don't see a problem. I'll all allow right. it. <laughs> I just, it hit my heart today. Okay. So a little background. This is when Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Galilee from Judea, yeah. passing through Samaria. They stop at a well, and his disciples go to eat. So he, a, a Samarian woman walks up, and she says, 
Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. And then Jesus responds and says, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Which to me says, the location doesn't matter ever. It's how you do it, right? And then he goes on in uh, verse 23, well, 22. You worship what you do not know. We We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and it and is here now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. And then the last bit, uh, verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So he says it twice, in spirit and truth. It must be pretty important. I mean, if God himself or the Son of God himself well, uh, is repeating himself, go ahead and take some notes, all right? <laughs> yeah, uh, amen on that. And, and let me just say something that I learned that I've preached for years and, and thought it was one way because it's not, you know, you're intentionally deceiving anyone, but mm-hmm. you, you learn and uh, yeah. nobody knows all. But it's little s. Yes. It's not big s. Now watch this. Big s is the Holy Spirit. But little s is our spirit. Yeah. We're to worship God in truth yeah. and with our spirit, with all yeah. of our soul, with, with all of our with emotions. We have. That's it. Yeah. And, and I didn't see that for years. So I wrote this down that, you know, truth without spirit, you slow up. But then spirit without truth, you blow up. Oh. But when you have spirit and truth, you grow up. Blessed be the balance. So what I'm saying, you got, you got people who are freezing in formalism. Okay, they, they, uh, they have truth but no spirit. Then you got people who are frying in fanaticism. They screaming and yelling and jumping, and nothing wrong with that. But what are you screaming and yelling, and jumping to? So they have no truth. But when you put the mind and the emotions. Emotion. And the wheel together, you got spirit and truth, and that's when things begin to change. And 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 what I want to say to you is, if you continue reading on down that chapter, I'm not trying to hog the session oh, here, no, but, no. but this is really good. Is you'll find out here comes the perverter. She changed the whole subject from worshiping God, and tried to talk about well, where are we supposed to do this at? You yeah. know, where are we supposed yeah. to go there? And then it went from that to her boyfriends and she kept trying to change the subject and God kept Jesus kept bringing her back hold on we're not and when we when we talk about worship that's what Satan does he's like look over here look at those shoes look at that hat look at that look at that uh, uh, you know guy over here not paying attention look at that girl running around and he's got us distracted and we we're not worshiping with spirit and truth so I this is just passionate yeah. A passion for me. It's an exciting chapter. When Derek said he was going to bring that up about uh, 15, 20 minutes ago, I got kind of what y'all call lit. <laughs> yeah, um, there we go. Okay, okay. All right. Is that, is so that still is that a good word? Yeah, lit? yeah. Okay, yeah. Lit. Well, Somebody's yeah. been doing some research. Okay, a lot. Yeah, yeah boy, go. I got yeah. some game. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Can we get that mic <laughs> muted, please? Anyways, uh, Derek. So something I've been wanting to ask you on the show, man, is, uh, you know, we just said it, it, you have to do it with all your spirit, all your emotions, all your mind, all that. So that that leads me to the question of how do you do that and play an instrument at the same time? So so I guess what I'm asking is everybody here in the congregation, they, uh, they're in worship mode because you're providing that catalyst. But... Mm-hmm. but I, I guess what I'm saying is, is, is it, is it work minded? Are you like, are you focused on getting the set done, or That's a good is is it easy to mess up because you're just like, oh, sorry, I was just, I was, I, I was having a moment there. How do you balance that out? Well, for me, I'm I'm lucky and grateful that I've had the ability, and I've done it long enough that I really don't have to think about it that much. So once we get going, especially with the like com- t- contemporary stuff, it repeats a lot. It allows me to be part of the worship as yeah. I'm helping with the worship, the uh, serving. You know. that, that's so I can, I can kind of give it away 
to God and yeah. just go and worship myself. And, and, and I think, too, uh, Landon, um, I know you asked Derek, but what about bringing your worship with you? I, I come in here, and I'm in, I, have a, I have a spirit of worship. It's a spirit. They that worship God must worship God in spirit. And, tr- and so I come in here with an attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving, and I'm bringing my worship in here, and now I'm anointed when I touch those keys. And yeah. now I'm not really playing anymore. I mean, yeah, I put my time in, but now the Holy Spirit takes over me. I open my spirit to his spirit, and it gets it gets insane. I, I mean, I'd had it before where God would, you know, just be so thick in here, he'd squeeze your heart and mm-hmm. juice run out your eyes is what the old boy used to say. And, and, and I just think we come with it. We bring our worship. You bring your worship. He bring. When we all get together, it's, man, it is insane. And, you know, I'm really glad you brought that up because I was going to follow up. You know, I always wanted to know the answer how you did that, and now we all know. But, um, you know, it's, I think to sum it up in layman's terms is uh, it's it's just the mindset when you're on stage playing well yeah of course you got to kind of you, you motor control you got to pay attention to what you're playing but i think as long as you have it in your head it's almost like you're saying here you go god this is this is it's for you man yeah, it's it's autopilot he would of. not have put you in that position if it was going to interfere with your worship exactly. like you see me i'm the media director here and you can ask uh leah you can ask anybody that helps me out back there i am pulled in Ten different directions on Sunday, but I still find a way to get something out of it, because and you know y'all are gonna think I'm I'm just embellishing this because it's a because it's a cool saying, but it's true. There have been times during uh, mic check where I've just you know no one saw me do it, but I I mean I just started tearing up doing working the board, and it was almost like God saying, "Hey, um, you really think I care if you're sitting down there?" I mean. You know, I've always seen it as is if you work in any aspect of the church, you're helping God. And for me, I'm for all these first time visitors or people that come and want to do more. I'm giving them a real pretty package. I like, and I, and I want to say something to you because uh, I don't want to forget this point. That's why I interrupted you. Is you're worshiping through your work, and I preach messages on that. Y'all mm-hmm. y'all remember I preached on how you work whether you're a plumber or what, But I, here's what I want to say to all you media people, because I don't think y'all get the credit that y'all deserve, is that when y'all put the lyrics up on time, every time, and you got the PowerPoints working, and you, you're touching all my senses. See, these are gates, eye gate, ear gate, feel gate. These affect my spirit. And when all the things I see and feel and hear are coordinated, and it's not confusing, then I don't get distracted. And y'all kill y'all self, yeah. basically. Every Sunday you do an outstanding job. You didn't know I was going to say all this. Thank God for y'all, but think about it. Boy, when, when we're singing a song and y'all jump to I Fly Away and we singing What a Wonderful God or whatever, everybody kind of what turns, I mean, the whole service. So y'all are so important with the sound, with the cameras, with the PowerPoint, y'all are just as important as the preaching, as the guys leading worship, as the people playing. Uh, all of us are worshiping God in our way that God's created us to worship him. We can worship through our work, and we can worship through our voice, and we can come in corporate worship as we're doing here. I worship God in the shower. There ain't nobody else seeing me when I get in the shower. But when I come with y'all, it's corporate worship. Yeah, that's, that goes back to what I was saying. You can worship in all of your life and everything you do. And it, and he helps create, just like we do, brain and heart coherence. So we feel God. Man, this is good. I, I'm, I'm being serious to you. I'm, I'm liking this. Yeah, it's just like gratitude is one of the easiest emotions to, like, fake to yourself. And it's an elevated emotion. So if you get there, then you can feel joy. And you can feel excitement and everything above that. And to me, the, the closer, the further up that scale you go, the closer to feeling God's love you get. That's in my opinion. Oh, that's good. That's Somebody good. might want to write that one down. That yeah. was oh, that's going to be a good bumper sticker. <laughs> and and, and I, I'll tell you what, I, I don't, I know we're running out of time, but I think we need to come back to this next week. I, I, 
I just think I just think we got to keep hammering on what this worship is before we get into other elements because it's just so good, Landon, that you've led us into this area. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate everything, and and uh, like I said, folks, it's going to be a multiple part series. Uh, me and Derek, we got some more nuggets to throw at you next week. But what have we learned today? We've learned that worship is the intentional outward expression of loving God. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the music portion of church, but it's, and we've also learned that uh, you can worship God by doing something for God and get fed spiritually at the same time. When I'm working that camera up there, when I'm working the Facebook live stream and all that, I'm still retaining what you're saying, yeah. but I don't feel bad about, uh, you know, maybe missing something because I know that I missed it because I'm still doing something for God, yeah. and and that's what he wants. That's why he made us. That's the whole point of us being here. And one more thing I want to add before we put a bow on this one is that, well. folks, just remember, just remember, and, and, and this will make you feel uh, maybe a little scared because, you know, you see just the whole scope of things, but just know that out of every creature on earth, every, uh, uh, every animal, every life form, we are the only thing that is emotionally capable of worshiping. Now, God made everything with love. He made everything to work together in harmony. But you'll never see a wild or domesticated animal do anything that resembles worship. You'll never right. see, you know, if a tiger kills an antelope, he feels no remorse. That's just what he's programmed to do. If we kill an animal, we feel a little bad about it. So we have, you know, that is when Genesis says we were created in the image of God, that is the image of God, that emotional stability and all that. So, so just think about that, folks. Worship really is a big deal because guess what? We're the only things on earth that can do it because that's literally what we were made to do. Now, now Landon, I need to interrupt something. I need to do some damage control here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is animals don't have souls is what you're talking about. So you done went to telling people that their animals are not going to heaven subliminally. You done went to tell them that <laughs> no, you hadn't. But somebody will be thinking, I know my puppy worships, and I know my. I'm just kidding. Well, I'm just kidding. But pu but what you're saying is is that dogs and animals don't have a soul, meaning they, c you know, I, you know. Well, that's a question I just don't have the answer to. I've always said that. I think uh, my puppy's going to heaven, but I'm talking about everybody else's puppy. Have, have you ever heard of an animal sinning? <laughs> I mean, like, I feel like they have perfect uh, harmony with the Creator already. Because, yeah. I, mean, I mean, we're the ones that messed up and sinned, not them. So, so, so think Good. about that. Who says they're not going? They, they don't have to jump through hoops that they've set up for themselves. Yeah. Mine's so. going. I don't know if y'all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you. <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Special Wednesday edition. We'll be back next Tuesday. I'm Landon Wright. Of course, this is Pastor KD. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. For showing back up. Yes, sir. And my new buddy, Mr. Derek Ashcraft. Thank you, my man. You're welcome. I didn't damage the, the hand, did I? Okay. <laughs> They're tough, man. We was about to ruin a Sunday there. All right, folks. Y'all have a blessed rest of the week. We'll see you next time. Thank you.